Hello again to all my listeners tuning in out there. Welcome to Fractured Poet, a podcast for all of you poetically insane individuals who love getting lost in the art of poetry. Podcasting from Ontario, California, I am your host, Katrina Wisniewski, just another person in the world obsessed with words, striving to make sense of it all. All right, so today's episode, I am going to read poems about admiration. And no, it's not necessarily poems about love. Okay, well, maybe half of the poems, maybe a little less or a little more than half, are pertaining to love-like admiration. The other two poems, two or three, I kind of lost track of how many I'm doing this episode, are on different topics. Won't reveal too much, but yeah, just know that the theme of this episode is dedicated to poems of admiring someone or something. And the first poem I am going to read is called A Woman to Love. Her loud voice echoes through the house, so alarming as it lingers within the walls. Embracing her presence as her Mexican accent reassures me that I am home. Raising four children and a husband to tend to, Her actions are admirable. Bombarded with turmoil, she still manages to accomplish her goals and make the best of things. To capture her charisma, she cares for all who welcome her, expressing her endless love to those around her, uncovering a gift only she can give. I enjoy her presence and her will to sacrifice. However, she is sometimes impractical, and difficult to converse with, but she is, after all, a woman to love. Now, I know I wrote this poem as an assignment, and I don't remember which poetry class this was for, but according to the Word document I have this poem typed up on, I know for sure that it had to do with an assignment. I had to write a poem that characterized a friend, family member, or a famous person through his or her actions. I had to write action verbs to create vivid imagery of the person I was writing about in order to bring the character to life in some way or another. And with that, I will read you the list that I had on that document. And this was a list of things I had to include in this poem. Bullet point one, a stay-at-home mom, Mexican, loud, raised four kids and had a husband, been through a lot of turmoil and made the best of it, caring, loving, has her crazy moments. Those are different bullets, obviously. I honestly don't even know if this was supposed to be about a specific person. I had noted next to the details of the assignment that I wanted this poem to revolve around my mom. But considering some of the things that were listed, some characteristics clearly did not pertain to my mom. So whatever direction I went in is what you just heard. I can't really say anything more about this poem other than what I just mentioned. So with that, I will move on to the next poem, which is called When Time Stops. Like a golden chalice, his reflection lies so comfortably. A moment spared to admire his shine and my reasons why. Exploring his body only to assure him I'm still near. A waking groan spills from his lips, turning over to see the time. Our eyes lock, deep in thought. I give him a smile, playful and wise. A kiss to lure him in, making him forget what lies beyond the sheets. Breathing softly, I whisper words that are forbidden, carefully moving as our bodies become one, reminiscing the night before last. So this poem, another one where I can't explain where it originated from. I don't remember when I wrote this poem. It's been a few years. I have actually gotten a couple of compliments on this poem because of the way things were worded and the words I chose for this poem. And to be honest, I actually kind of like the way I constructed this poem. This poem, 
you can actually count as a love-like poem, but again, this poem is about a girl or a woman admiring someone. There is a lot of passion in this poem, whether you consider passion in a more sexual way or just passion in general. It can go either way, I guess, whatever, whatever your mind goes to, I guess. Well, enough about that. I will move on to the next poem I'm going to read, and this one is called Nature's Storm. To hear the sound of rain drumming on the windowsill as it quickly falls to its watery grave has me hypnotized. A sudden flash brightens the sky, followed by a low, menacing roar echoing behind the clouds. I am addicted. The urge to race outside comes to mind, wanting to embrace each drop of rain on my skin, to experience the comfort of something so wonderful is priceless. Tilting my head to the darkened sky, allowing my body to absorb every second, just in time to see another flash slither across the sky, exposing the storm's rawness. Anticipation is in the air, for there was no thunder to follow, yearning to hear its harmless threat. As I make my way to the door, the gods have finally made themselves known. The sounds of crackling thunder roll beyond the clouds, showing us how powerless we really are. Who knew one could find such security in nature's storm? So this poem has a similar story to the ones I have previously recited, as in I chose this poem, read it, didn't like it, and decided to rewrite it. The original title for this poem was called Nature's Gift, but after reconstructing and rewriting the poem, I chose a different title, obviously Nature's Storm. I tried to keep everything from the original poem as I started the rewrite. I don't believe I left anything out. Everything is just worded and structured differently. I love rainy weather. Of course, I hate driving in it. Literally scares the shit out of me. But as long as I'm inside and have nowhere to go, rain is something I really enjoy admiring. I love watching lightning. I love the sound of thunder for whatever reason. It brings me comfort. To experience how nature works in the sky is absolutely craziness. If you really pay attention, you can see the lightning bolts just slither across the sky. The crazy thing about lightning is that the bolts are always different. Not one is the same as the ones before. Thunder is an entirely different story. Although thunder can be scary because of how loud it gets, but that's also what's so fascinating about it. Thunder is very mysterious, and unlike lightning, you can't track thunder. I mean, you know if there's lightning, obviously, most of the time, thunder follows, but there is no visual as to where the thunder is coming from and where it'll strike. And to hear the low rumbling in the sky, letting you know that it's coming, and then it surprises you with its loud, crackling roar, I love it. I know a lot of people who are afraid of thunder, naturally, because it honestly does sound a bit scary, but I don't know. Something about lightning and thunder makes me all warm and cozy. It calms me. Sitting in the dark, watching the flashes of lightning bounce off the walls, only anticipating what will come next. It all makes it more enjoyable when I can hear the rain outside. But anyways, I don't remember what triggered me to write this poem. I am not sure if there was a storm going on during the time, but whatever it was that made me write this poem, I must have been craving a lightning and thunderstorm. Or I could have just been imagining one and thinking about how relaxing it would be to witness a storm similar to the one I was describing in the poem. But enough of my obsessions with thunderstorms. I will read the next poem. This one is called Smile. At a moment's notice, I find myself daydreaming about the day you grace me with your presence. Much to my amazement, I couldn't help but be captivated by your lips, mesmerized 
by their every move. As the night went on, I was embraced by a slight smirk, revealing a small part of you. Exchanging sarcastic rebuttals, triggering the most attractive grin, knowing then that I had you. Unable to control myself, I become flirtatious, instantly lighting a beam in your eyes. Our minutes of engaging in playful tendencies brings absolute delight, allowing me to hear that amazing laugh and exposing those seductive dimples the night I was taken by your smile. So this poem, if you couldn't already tell, is a love poem. I tried to make this a neutral non-love poem, but I guess my words got the best of me and went in a different direction. I won't hide the fact that my fiancé was the main subject in this poem. Just remembering our first date and how well the night went, and regardless of how cliche this is going to sound, the night when I was proven wrong that love at first sight does in fact exist. And I'm not going to get into a love tangent or anything. This poem is pretty self-explanatory, so I won't elaborate on this poem too much. But this poem, or at least the topic, was pulled from that write the poem book I mentioned a few times throughout a couple episodes. The topic of the poem of choice was smiles. It took me quite a few months to complete this episode, I have to be honest, I wrote this poem on December 28th of 2020, sitting on my bed in the dark, listening to a band called Silent Season. They're really good, by the way, so check them out. And then poof, a new poem was brought to life. I had a block there for a little while, even though I do have who knows how many poems tucked away in a drawer under my bed somewhere, I just felt the urge to write new poems and nothing was coming out. I have eight potential poems saved on my desktop, staring at me every time I turn on my laptop. Basically reminders that I need and have to write new poems for my podcast. And I've had multiple attempts and nothing came out until that night at around one-ish, two in the morning. All right, so getting away from that... I guess this next poem can also be declared as a love poem, but as I said in the beginning, at least I think I did, admiration in terms of my poetry can be mixed in with love, romantic, or not like love and romantic poems. It depends on how you look at it, but admiration can just be simply admiring the person of choice that brings the butterfly-like feelings in the pit of your stomach to recognize and praise how much that person means to you, and no matter how many words you use or poems you write, nothing will ever begin to explain how much you truly admire them. And with that being said, I will now recite the last poem of the episode. Here is True Love's Soulmate. To find a lover was never the point. Yearning for a lifelong partner a companion to love and cherish, till death do us part. Someone who has a kindred spirit, a reliable confidant. A task that seems too overwhelming. To eventually become each other's spouse, a goal most cannot accomplish. The search begins, a scavenger hunt for the ultimate sweetheart, a true love soulmate. Okay, so I was wrong. Apparently this poem did not turn out as lovey-dovey as I thought it would. Totally different direction. Even though I am spoken for, the years I was single, and even when I wasn't, it was really challenging to find someone that I meshed well with. I can't really say that I connected with many people on this level. Finding a soulmate is difficult to stumble on, if you want to word it that way. However, finding a soulmate isn't necessarily love-related, though, either. I will admit that I believe that I do have a person or two that I consider my soulmate, those individuals being really close friends, people that just get me without me explaining or them needing me to elaborate on any way. 
And that's not to say that I don't have that with my fiance, because I do. Aside from the relationship-related soulmates, that goes to say a soulmate doesn't have to involve love. However, when it does, it's a hole-in-one. To find someone, a lover, a partner, a spouse, your true love, who is also your soulmate, is not something you find every day, nor is it something that usually happens often. It's a wonderful feeling when you get the complete package. I can't even begin to count how many times my fiance and I have read each other's mind without even trying, or the amazing fact that we just get each other, again, without any explanation or elaborating. Whatever he feels, I feel. Whatever I feel, he feels. We are connected in so many ways, it's unreal, and more often, not explainable. And on that note, that concludes the show. But before I get into my usual ending spiel, I want to give a huge thanks to a friend of mine, Irish Rivers, for introducing me to Anchor FM and helping me out planning and guiding me through the podcasting process. Without him, I more than likely would not have a podcast. So Irish, thank you so much for your help. I cannot thank you enough for your tips and suggestions that got me started and got me to this point. Thank you so much. And lastly, to those of you who are always tuning in, and even those who are just joining in, I hope you liked what you heard today and hope you tune in next time. You can catch this and future episodes at anchor.fm forward slash fractured poet. This episode of Fractured Poet was written and produced by me, Katrina Wisniewski. Music by Alternative Rock Volume 1 and Rock Electronica Volume 4 from a website called freeplaymusic.com. You can also follow me on Instagram at Fractured Poet. And as always, thanks for listening and until next time.